The word of the Lord that came to Micah of Moresheth in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear you peoples, all of you. Listen, O earth, in all that is in it, and let the Lord God be a witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, the Lord is coming forth out of his place, and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth. And the mountains will melt under him, and the valleys will be cleft, like wax before the fire, like waters poured down a steep place. All this is for the transgression of Jacob, and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what is the son of the house of Judah? Is it not Jerusalem? Therefore I will make Samaria a heap in the open country, a place for planting vineyards. And I will pour down her stones into the valley, and uncover her foundations. All her images shall be beaten to pieces, all her hires shall be burned with fire, and all her idols I will lay waste. For from the hire of a harlot she gathered them, and to the hire of a harlot they shall return. For this I will lament and wail, I will go stripped and naked, I will make lamentation like the jackals, and mourning like the ostriches. For her wound is incurable, and it has come to Judah. It has reached to the gate of my people, to Jerusalem. Tell it not in Gath, weep not at all, in Bethlehephra. Roll yourselves in the dust, pass on your way, inhabitants of Shafir, in nakedness and shame, the inhabitants of Zanan. Do not come forth, the wailing of Bethelzel shall take away from you its standing place. For the inhabitants of Meroth wait anxiously for good, because evil has come down from the Lord to the gate of Jerusalem. Harness the steeds to the chariots, inhabitants of Lachish. You were the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion, for in you were found the transgressions of Israel. Therefore you shall give parting gifts to Moreshethgath. The houses of Agzib shall be a deceitful thing to the, th to the kings of Israel. I will again bring a conqueror upon you, inhabitants of Merishah. The glory of Israel shall come to Adullam. Make yourselves bald and cut off your hair for the children of your delight. Make yourselves as bald as the eagle, for they shall go from you into exile. Woe to those who devise wickedness and work evil upon their beds. When the morning dawns, they perform it, because it is in the power of their hand. They covet fields and seize them and houses, and take them away. They oppress a man and his house, a man and his inheritance. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, against, the, against this family I am devising evil, from which you cannot remove your necks, and you shall not walk haughtily, for it will be an evil time. In that day they shall take up a taunt song against you, and wail with bitter lamentation, and say, We are utterly ruined. He changes the portion of my people, how he removes it from me. Among your captors he divides our fields. Therefore you will have none to cast the line by lot in the assembly of the Lord. Do not preach, thus they preach. One should not preach of such things. Disgrace will not overtake us. Should this be said, O house of Jacob? Is the spirit of the Lord impatient? Are these his doings? Do not my words do good to him who walks uprightly? But you rise against my people as an enemy. You strip the robe from the peaceful, from those who pass by trustingly, with no thought of war. The women of my people you drive out from their pleasant houses. From their young children you take away my glory forever. Arise and go, for this is no place to rest, because of uncleanness, uncleanness that destroys with a grievous destruction. If a man should go about and utter wind and lies, saying, I will preach to you of wine and strong drink. He would be the preacher for his people. I will surely gather all of you, O Jacob. I will gather the remnant of Israel. I will set them together like sheep in a fold, like a flock in its pasture, a noisy multitude of men. He who opens the breach will go up before them. They will break through and pass the gate, going out by it. Their king will pass on before them, the Lord at their head. And I said, Hear, you heads of Jacob, and rulers of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know justice? 
You who hate the good and love the evil, who tear the skin from off my people and their flesh from off their bones, who eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them, and break their bones in pieces and chop them up like meat in a kettle, like flesh in a cauldron. Then they will cry to the Lord, but he will not answer them. He will hide his face from them at that time, because they have made their deeds evil. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets, who lead my people astray, who cry peace, when they have something to eat, but declare war against him, who puts nothing in their mouths. Therefore it shall be night to you without vision, and darkness to you without divination. The sun shall go down upon the prophets, and the day shall be black over them. The seers shall be disgraced, and the diviners put to shame. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer from God. But as for me, I am filled with power, with the Spirit of the Lord, and with justice and might, to declare to Jacob his transgression, and to Israel his sin. Hear this, you heads of the house of Jacob, and rulers of the house of Israel, who abhor justice, and pervert all equity, who build Zion with blood, and Jerusalem with wrong. Its head gives judgment for a bribe, its priests teach for hire, its prophets divine for money, yet they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord in the midst of us? No evil shall come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be plowed as a field, Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, and the mountain of the house a wooded height. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised up above the hills, and peoples shall flow to it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and we may walk his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples, and shall decide for strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. For all the peoples walk, each in the name of its God but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. In that day, says the Lord, I will assemble the lame and gather those who have been driven away, and those whom I have afflicted. And the lame I will make the remnant, and those who were cast off a strong nation. And the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion, from this time forth and forevermore. And you, O tower of the flock, hill of the daughter of Zion, to you shall it come, the former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Now why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in you? Has your counselor perished, that pangs have seized you like a woman in labor? Writhe and groan, O daughter of Zion, like a woman with labor pains. For now you shall go forth from the city, and dwell in the open country. You shall go to Babylon, there you shall be rescued. There the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemies." Now many nations are assembled against you, saying, Let her be profaned, and let our eyes gaze upon Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord. They do not understand his plan, that he has gathered them as sheaves to the threshing floor. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make, you, I will make your horn iron, and your hooves bronze. You shall beat in pieces many peoples, and shall devote their gain to the Lord, their wealth to the Lord of the whole earth. A man of no understanding has vain and false hopes, and dreams give wings to fools. As one who catches at a shadow and pursues the wind, so is he who gives heed to dreams. The vision of dreams is this against that, the likeness of a face confronting a face. From an unclean thing, what will be made clean? And from something false, what will be true? Divinations and omens and dreams are falling, and like a woman with labor pains, the mind has fancies. Unless they are sent from the Most High as a visitation, do not give your mind to them. For dreams have deceived many, and those who put their hope in them have failed. Without such deceptions, the law will be fulfilled, and wisdom is made perfect in truthful lips. 
An educated man knows many things, and one with, such, with much experience will speak with understanding. He that is inexperienced knows few things, but he that has traveled acquires much cleverness. I have seen many things in my travels, and I understand more than I can express. I have often been in danger of death, but have escaped because of these experiences. The spirit of those who fear the Lord will live, for their hope is in him who saves them. He who fears the Lord will not be timid, nor play the coward, for he is his hope. Blessed is the soul of the man who fears the Lord. To whom does he look, and who is his support? The eyes of the Lord are upon those who love him, a mighty protection and strong support, a shelter from the hot wind and a shade from noonday sun, a guard against stumbling and a defense against falling. He lifts up the soul and gives light to the eyes. He grants healing, life, and blessing. If one sacrifices from what has been wrongfully obtained, the offering is blemished. The gifts of the lawless are not acceptable. The Most High is not pleased with the offerings of the ungodly, and he is not propitiated for sins by a multitude of sacrifices. Like one who kills a son before his father's eyes is the man who offers a sacrifice from the property of the poor. The bread of the needy is the life of the poor. Whoever deprives them of it is a man of blood. To take away a neighbor's living is to murder him. To deprive an employee of his wages is to shed blood. When one builds and another tears down, what do they gain but toil? When one prays and another curses, to whose voice will the Lord listen? If a man washes after touching a dead body and touches it again, what has he gained by his washing? So if a man fasts for his sins and goes again and does the same things, who will listen to his prayer? And what has he gained by humbling himself? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the exiles of the dispersion of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen and destined by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And to, inher and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which though perishable, is tested by fire, may redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him, and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. The prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours searched and inquired about, his sal about this salvation. They inquired what person or time was indicated by the Spirit of Christ within them when predicting the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you in the things which have now been announced to you by those who preach the good news to you through the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. The prophets, like Micah, looked forward to and spoke of the latter days. When God's kingdom would be established, when the nations and peoples would flow to the house of the Lord for instruction, and the lame and afflicted would be gathered together. The fulfillment that the prophets looked for, St. Peter proclaims as accomplished through the sufferings of Christ and the good news already being preached to the first Christians. Since the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, Peter himself had preached instruction to men and women of various nations, had personally witnessed the lame walk and had seen the kingdom established in the hearts of thousands who he and the apostles baptized. But Peter makes clear that there is more to come. An inheritance awaits us, an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven. How is God establishing his kingdom in your heart?